guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing something very different. I'm really excited for today's video. In fact, today is going to be the first half of a series because the project we're doing is just a little bit too big for one episode, so I'm going to continue this tomorrow. But today I'm going to be making a really cool dragon. And my idea for this is since I've been really inspired with the whole realistic reptiles and stuff, I kind of want to use those as a reference point for making my own species of dragon. So I'm trying to make a super realistic dragon. I know I'm going to use fantasy colors and stuff like that, but I'm going to do my best to try and just create something that looks like it could actually be in real life. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so what I think we're going to do in today's video is probably work on all the clay pieces and getting them painted and resin, and then tomorrow we can work on the sewing and putting everything together and finishing everything off. I think that's how we kind of did it when I did Nergigante, another piece that I had to split into two videos because it just had too much detail. Anyways, the first thing that I'm going to work on is going to be the clay face. So of course I've got a piece of tin foil that's kind of roughly shaped out into like a cone shape and I'm going to get this completely covered in clay. The type of clay that I'm using is original Sculpey, it's super easy to use and you can just bake it in a normal kitchen oven. So again, I'm just going to take strips of clay, I'm going to wrap it around my tin foil. Once I have everything covered, I'm going to blend this all together. And that will give us a starting base for our head. So the first detail that I'm going to focus on is adding the eyes. Now my color theme for this is going to be a lot of purples, blacks, and maybe a little bit of blues. So I figured since blue isn't going to be a very prominent color in the rest of the body, it would be a good color to give to the eyes so they kind of pop a bit more. So I have these nice little glass eyes and I'm just going to push them into the side of the face, check to make sure that they're even from all different directions, and then we're going to start building up clay around them to make eyelids. Now the main inspiration for this dragon are two different type of reptiles that I really liked and I kind of wanted to combine them and then throw in a dragon element to it. So the main lizard that I'm using for inspiration for this piece is a tree monitor and then the second one is a fan throated lizard. They both actually have very similar body structures, so I figured they'd be kind of easy to mesh together and just create something new from them. So while I'm working on the face, you're going to notice that it's going to look a lot like a tree monitor, but slightly off. And that's because the other reptile that I'm using for reference is the fan-throated lizard, and it's a lot smaller, so a lot of the features are more compact and petite. So it's going to change the look a lot since we're going to be kind of combining the two. Once I'm happy with how the eyes look, of course I'm going to add a lot more detail to this later, but after that I'm going to start working on the layout of the mouth. Now normally when I add a strip of clay to make the mouth, this is going to be like the upper lip and then I'm going to kind of blend everything together. Well the main reason I'm adding a strip of clay isn't because I'm making the upper lip, it's because I want to add a little bit more clay here because it's a little too flat. So I kind of just need a little bit more clay to work with to make the lips kind of stand out a bit more. So I'm going to be blending this strip of clay upwards and downwards. And then after that I can take my tools and scratch out where I want the lines to be to separate the two lips. I'm going to make sure this looks nice and even and then I can go in with my tools and define the features a bit more. And then we can actually even start adding some scale work right now. At this point we've laid out all the main features of the face, the next thing that we need to focus on is adding all the textures and the scaling. Now with adding the scales and texture, I highly recommend focusing your detail around the main features like the eyes, the mouth, and the nostrils, mainly because you want those to stand out. And if you put too much detail in your face, it'll actually make it really hard to notice the detail. It kind of just overwhelms the eyes to add that much detail with this piece, especially since we're going to be painting over it. It'll make painting kind of hard. So as you get further away from the main details, you're mainly just going to be adding texture to it to blend it in from one detail to the other. So after we get all the scaling and the texture in place and we like what we have, we're going to clean up the edge around the base of the head. So basically we need a slight indent for where the fabric is going to connect to the head, so we're going to make sure this is a nice straight line going all the way around and then we can scrape away any extra clay that we have. 
And then after we have that all fixed up, we can put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 45 to 55 minutes. You're also welcome to wait and bake this with some of the other clay pieces because we do have a lot and I know I don't like running my oven that long. And so the next clay piece that we're going to be working on is going to be a gem for the end of the tail. Now the end of the tail isn't designed after anything. The only idea that I had when I was building it was that I wanted it to look like a magic staff. And the main reason I came up with that idea is because tree monitors have such long tails and I wanted to give my dragon the same thing and I was thinking of a long staff afterwards and adding a bit of a magic touch to it. So I just kind of blended all those ideas together and tried to make the end of the tail look like something that would cast magic spells or something. I don't know. It was just something I wanted to throw in to add a bit more fantasy theme to the piece. And so the main gem that I'm using for this, I have actually no idea what it is. All I know is that it's nice and clear and it kind of has a crackling effect. And what I'm doing is I'm gluing it to a lump of tin foil so we can have a base to work with and start building our clay on it. So I know I want this to be at the end of it and then I want to have some amethyst going around it. So I have some rough amethysts that are kind of pointed and jagged and I'm just going to kind of build them around the base of this. After I had all the gems in place, I added a bit of texture to the base of it, I straightened up the edge, and then I'm going to bake this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably just 35 minutes. It's not very large, plus I want to be careful with the gems. Now with the legs, I'm going to be heavily focusing on making them look like reptile legs, and that's because I figured the legs of reptiles are so different from dragons. I figured if I gave them dragon feet, it would kind of throw everything off and make it look a little less realistic. Plus, I want to make it unique, and I thought that would be a cool way of adding just a bit more of a reptile feel to it. And so the front legs are going to be very even, the middle toe is directly in the middle and then we have two toes off to the side, everything's very symmetrical. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of clay to the base of our wire frame and then we're going to also add some claws to the tips of the wires. So I'm going to be focusing on making the front legs first and then we're going to work on the back legs. I didn't want to jump back and forth between making the two, even though the making of them is very similar, the style and shape of them is very different and I didn't want to make it look confusing so I figured let's just make one and then the other. So now we're going to do a pre-bake and we're going to bake this for probably just 20 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then after that's out of the oven and is cool to touch, we can start working on the bottoms of the feet. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making strips of clay for the length of the wire and I'm covering up the bottom of the wire frame. We're going to add texture to this and make sure we have the shape of the foot nice and defined. And then we're going to put this in the oven again, 275 Fahrenheit, for probably just another 25 minutes. And then after it's done baking for the second time, it's cooled again, we can start working on the tops of the feet. So the tops of the feet are going to be mainly scaling, so what I had to do is I had to make a bunch of tiny little balls of clay. So I just made a ton. I made just too much, too many balls of clay. It was, it was very tiring. But what I did since I had to make so many little balls of clay is I didn't make them while I was working on the foot because I figured it would be a pain in the butt. What I did was I made them all ahead of time so I just made a ton of little balls of clay. It was very boring but eventually I had enough to work on the feet and then I just started laying them out on the tops of the feet. So with laying the scales out with the top of the foot, you can kind of just make it random and make sure to cover everything up. But I do recommend with the toes when you're covering them up with the scales to kind of make a pattern. With this one, I did three rows, but you can also do two and just make a zigzag because a lot of the scales on Reptile's toes are actually laid out nice and evenly and they do have somewhat of a pattern. But the top of the foot, you can kind of make a little bit more random if you wanted to. So we're going to get the tops of our front feet completely covered in the scales. If you want, you can kind of define the shape a little bit with your tools, but it's not really necessary. And then we just need to kind of straighten up the edge where we're going to connect this to the body. So we're just going to make sure the base of the foot is nice and straight, and we kind of have a nice indent for adding the fabric to the body later. So I'm going to put my finished front feet in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit, and I think our last bake is going to be about 45 minutes, just to make sure everything gets completely baked. Now we're going to start on the back feet, and like I said, they're very similar in technique to making the front feet, just everything is shaped a lot differently. So we're basically doing the same thing, the shape of our wireframe is a lot different. Now with my reptile pieces, when I'm making the wireframes for the back feet, I like to think of their back feet as being like human hands, except their pointer fingers are really long. <laughs> 
Anyways, like I was saying, the back feet are going to be put together exactly the same way as the front feet, just everything is kind of proportioned differently. But once we have the back feet done along with the front feet, we can put these in the oven as well. And you can put them in the same temperature, but they are a little bit larger, so I do recommend maybe leaving them in another 10 minutes. So instead of putting them in for 45, put them in for about 55. But honestly, you could bake both of them at 55 if you wanted to do them all at the same time. And then again, like always, the temperature is 275 Fahrenheit. Okay, and then once we have everything out of the oven and it's cooled, we have all our clay pieces done, we can start on painting them. So I think I'm going to paint everything in the same order that I made it. So I'm going to start with the head, then we can do the tip of the tail, and then we can move on to the feet, just to make everything simple. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of primer the face and the main colors that I'm using are going to be kind of dark purples and pinks and stuff like that, but we do want to kind of add a natural touch to it. So at first we're going to go really unnatural with the colors because we need the undertones and everything, but we'll slowly kind of add to it to kind of mute the colors as we go. So I'm going to start with the bottom of the head because I want the belly and everything under the dragon to be very bright and then as we get closer to the top of the dragon it's going to switch from like a dark purple to a black. So we're going to start with our lighter colors first and then we can gradually go up the face and add those colors. So after we have our initial layers laid down, everything's blended together, it's dried, we can start adding our highlights and lowlights and different things like that to adjust the colors of the face. So again, I'm still kind of working with an unnatural color palette. Um, purple doesn't tend to be in nature too often. Most things tend to be on the blue scale or the red scale. They don't kind of mix too well. I mean, there's still chances of it, like with flowers and stuff, but with animals, it's kind of a bit more rare. So even though I absolutely love purples, they're beautiful, they're going to be kind of hard to work with if you're trying to do something hyper-realistic. So one thing I'm going to kind of do to counteract the unnatural color of the purple is I'm going to start adding some blues and browns which are very natural and I think they'll kind of go well with the purple. So I'm going to be using these colors to add markings to the face and kind of define some of the scaling. And then lastly, once I'm really happy with the colors, I'm going to add a white highlight here and there and then I also need to make sure that my glass eyes are cleaned off. Okay, so now I'm going to start painting the tip of the tail. So for this, I'm going to keep it kind of simple because I want the gems to be the focal point of it. So what I'm going to mainly do is just get all that clay covered in paint. So I'm going to be using a purple for that. I'm going to make sure everything's completely covered. Now while I'm doing this, I don't want to mess with trying to peel off the paint on all the different gems and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try my best to paint around them and not get the paint on it. This is going to slow down the painting for this quite a bit, but it's going to save me a lot of heartache in the end when I don't have to peel all the paint and scrape all of it off of the gems, and then if it doesn't scrape off, be really upset, because I want the gems to stay nice and clean. So again, the painting for this is very simple. I'm just mainly using a purple and adding some highlights here and there and adjusting the color. And then we're going to move on to painting the feet. Now like I said with the face, how we did a lot of the lighter colors on the bottom, we're going to do the same thing with the feet. Because again, I want to make sure that the belly of the dragon is very bright and purpley and kind of pink, and then everything fades from a darker purple to a black. Now with the painting of the feet, I'm not going to fade all the way to black, I'm just going to stick to a darker purple for the top. After we get those initial colors in place, we can start adding some highlights and stuff. So I want the tips of the toes to be a bit brighter. I'm going to have the claws black, but I want the tips of the toes to be brighter and then it kind of fades to a darker color. So I'm going to take a lighter purple, I'm going to add it to the tips of the toes, and then I'm going to kind of blend it into the rest of the foot. And then after that, I'm going to pick some random scales to paint blue, and then I'm also going to add some browns. And then the final step is just painting all the claws black, and then we can move on to doing the same thing to the back feet. So like I said, these are going to be painted basically the same way, it just looks slightly different because everything is kind of positioned differently on the foot. So we're doing the same colors on the bottom of the feet, tops of the feet, the highlights and stuff, they're all the same. Okay, so we're basically done with all the clay pieces. We've sculpted them, we've painted them. The last thing we're going to do is once these have dried, I'm going to mix up some resin and paint it over everything, and then that's going to have to cure overnight.
Okay guys, I think that's it for today's video. I'm really happy with what we got done so far. We got the clay pieces done, they're all painted up, and then tomorrow we're going to work on all the sewing, putting everything together, and just finishing the dragon. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to keep an eye out for tomorrow's. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!